Hello everyone, this is Smart Haddad here again. So in this uh, new YouTube video, I would like to show you how you can configure the uh, network address translation on Cisco iOS and also how to configure the dynamic uh, host configuration protocol, which is the DHCP, how to configure it also on Cisco iOS. Of course, those are two different uh, topics, but what I would like to do is just to build up one lab to show you where you can use the NAT and where you can use the DHCP. So I'm going to do one lab to use both protocols and to explain to you what those protocols can do and how you configure them on the Cisco IOS. So let's go directly to see what is the lab scenario. So the lab scenario is very easy. I do have here two um, Cisco routers. I have the router one and I have the router two. So you can see them over here. Router one is acting as a router connected to the internet and it has to give uh, internet to router 2. So router 2, it, you can consider it as like an end device, like a computer or whatever. So what we need to do in this case, first, because the internet uh, ISP is connected to our fast internet interface 1 over 0 on router 1, then I want this, uh, this router 1 to be connected to the internet. So first, I need to configure the DHCP client on that interface. What is DHCP client? It is a possibility that the provider over here give me an IP address, a subnet mask, gateway, and all those information to my router, so this router can go to the internet. So first, we see how to configure the, the HTTP client. Two, I want to configure this side from router 1 to router 2, that router 1, because this is the router which is normally I, could, I should have it in my office or at my, at my house. So I want to configure it to give the IP address automatically to anyone connected here. So it could be that we have a switch here and we have many devices connected. Or maybe we have a switch and we have an access point connected or whatever, any device. Then what I need to do is just anyone connected to this interface on router one, then he can get an IP address. So we have to configure on that interface, which is the gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 0. I have to configure the DHCP server. So what is the DHCP server? That's a uh, dynamic host configuration protocol, which can provide for anyone who is requesting for IP, can give him an IP, the subnet mask, the gateway, the DNS, and so forth. So in this case, we cover how to make the Cisco router as a DHCP client when we work on this side, how to make it as a DHCP server when we work on this side. And then what is still missing is to do the NAT, the network address translation. So that means that this router, if you want to go to the internet, he will receive first an IP from this DHCP server. He will receive the IP, the subnet mask, the gateway, and so forth. Now, this uh, uh, router too, if you want to go to the internet, he will not be able to go to the internet because the IP that he has received is an IP from the inside, from the internal uh, side of uh, my network. So it's from the LAN side. And those IPs normally are private IPs and are not routed to the internet. We cannot route the private IP to the internet. So there is a mechanism which is called network address translation where the private IP are translated to a, an IP which can go to the internet, and that's something we have to do it over here. So we have to use the uh, NAT, and then I have to show you one way to do the NAT, which is called the PAT, Port Address Translation. So that means what? That means any IP coming from the inside here, it will be translated to the IP which is on my one side over here to go to the internet, to bring for them what they want as traffic, and then they come back from the internet, and then it will be NAT it again, and then this can have whatever he wants to have. So this is what we are going to do. Again, we are going to work on the DHCP client, the DHCP server, and then the NAT. And at the end, I'm going to try from this router to ping to an IP on the internet to see if I can go to the internet. At this moment, I do not have any configuration on my routers. So we have to start from scratch. How to start? First, we have to enable the interface, this one, this one. And then we make the HTTP client on this interface. Here we put an IP, and then we make the HTTP server, and then we make NAT, and then at the end, this interface should be enabled, and we have to do the HTTP client, and we have to see if this is gonna work. So let's go directly now and start doing the lab. So here I'm on router one. The first thing that I want to do is to enable, if we go back to the picture, the HTTP client on the fast internet one over zero, so this router can go to the internet. Let's do that. 
So how to enable the DHCP client? We have to go to Configure Terminal. And over here, we have to go to the interface. It is Flash Ethernet 1 over 0. And now I have to say IP address DHCP. But before I do that, it's very important that we miss something. If I say now to do show IP interface brief, we can see that Flash Ethernet 0 or 1 over 0, it is administratively down. So it's totally down. We have to bring it up first. So I have to say no shutdown. And then now I can say IP address DHCP because if the interface is down, how can it communicate with my uh, router, which is from my ISP? So IP address DHCP. This way, it's how you can do the DHCP client. Straightforward. Instead of putting an IP address on the interface, you just say IP address DHCP. And here we can see that we got now that this router has received an IP of 192.168.137.191 and this is a subnet mask. That means if I go now and say ping to a.a.a.a, .a .a .a, then we should be able to go to the internet. Here we go. So it is working. So this router has internet. So the first task we have to make this router connected to the internet is done. The second task that uh, we do have is that I want from this side that router 2 is connected to this interface. I want router 2 that he can get IP address, uh, subnet mask, and uh, uh, gateway, and so forth from router 1. So we have to configure the SCP server on router 1. Let's do that. Let's go to router 1 again. And now I have to go to the interface. First, we go to configure terminal, interface, gigabit 0 over 0. So, and then first we have to say no shutdown. So we just bring this interface up and then I will put on it an IP address. We can put any range. Let's use the range 192.168.12.1 subnet mask 255.255.255.0. We always need to put an IP address on the LAN side because this is going to be the gateway. And without you put an IP on the interface, which is on the LAN side, you cannot do the HTTP server. So. This is done now. If I say do show IP interface brief, we can see that this IP has been set on this interface and this interface is up, up. You can see it's manual because we put it manually. This one is DHCP because it has received it automatically from the DHCP server. Very good. Now, what I need to, to do over here is uh, uh, to uh, create a uh, pool. So to create the pool, I have to say IP DHCP pool and then question mark, and then they say uh, the word. So I would say internal, internal. So what is this pool? This pool is just anyone connected to my DHCP server. He will get the IP, the DNS, and subnet mask and so forth from this pool. So IP, DHCP pool, internal, and then that's it. Now, over here, I have to say from which range of IP addresses should it get? What's the subnet mask? What is the gateway? So all those information, I have to put it from here. If you do hit question mark, you can see what you can put over here. So you can, for example, say the default router, which is the gateway, the DNS server. What is the DNS server? The uh, If you want to give domain name, um, the lease, how much the uh, the uh, IP will be leased for the uh, DHCP client, the network, from which range it has to go. So you have different uh, uh, options here. I would choose the uh, ones which we really need. The first one is the network. So I would say that the network, that means the IPs that will be given, it should be from the same range from the IP that we put on the interface, which is 192.168.1.2.0. So that's it. Then we have, of course, to say, what is the subnet mask? Then we say slash 24. And then that's it. That's first thing. So the network, that means the IP it will be given to this uh, router and the subnet mask. The second thing is to do the um, uh, default route because uh, this computer or this router, when it wants to go to the internet, it should have a route to say, or the gateway to say, if I want to go to the internet, I have to send everything to this router. So this to this router, this means to this ad address over here or to this interface, which has an IP address of 192.168.12.1. So let's do that. Then we have to say default, default router, it is, 192.168.12.1. So the IP of the interface of the inside of router one. And that's it. Now, if you want to add more things, for example, you can say, I want to give the DNS 
say this IP A.A.A. .A .A .A, for example. You can do more things if you want to do the lease, you want to do some other options uh, on the HTTP, but that is out of scope of uh, this uh, video. So that's all what I need to do from my side. And the DDHCP server is ready now uh, to be able to give IP address to router2. Now, we have done the DHCP client here, router1 is connected. We have done here the IP on this interface, we made the HTTP server. That means this computer or this router will be able to go to the internet. But will be able to get an IP address and some information and so forth. But it will not be able to go to the internet because, as I said, this IP is from the LAN side and this IP is from the one side is different. So we have to do a NAT over here. So to translate the inside IP to the outside IP. So how to do the NAT? First, we have to classify the IPs which are inside, which are 192.168.12.0. We have to classify them. And we say that those IPs, any IP coming from 192.168.12. anything, then we have to NAT it, right? That's what we need to do. So first we have to classify this range of IP. So on router one again, now I have to say access list. I will create an access list one, which is a standard access list. And I will say permit, the IP, which is 192.168.12.0, and then 0.0.0.255. This is the wildcard mask. 0.0.0.255. So what I have done now, I just classified that any range coming from 192.168.12. anything. Now I want to do the NAT for it. So what is the command to do the NAT? It's very easy. I have to say IP NAT. So do not for anything coming from the source, which is the access list one. So anything coming from the access list one, so list one as a source, and going out from the interface, the out interface, if we go back to here, the out interface is fast net one over zero. That is the out interface. So anything coming from this router, which has an IP of 192.168.12. whatever, and going out from this interface, then do the NAT for it, which is overload. An interface here, fast Ethernet, 1 over 0. Then question mark, I'm going to use this one, overload. Overload, that means port address translation. That means everything will be translated from the IP, which is on the interface, on the WAN interface. All right, very good. So this is done. Now, this is not enough. Because we have still to say on this router, which interface is your inside NAT, which interface is your outside NAT. If we look to the picture again, this interface, gigabit 0 over 0, is the inside, and it is the outside. We have to tell the router that it is your inside, it is your outside on the NAT. So let's do that. If we go to the interface, interface, gigabit 0 over 0, I have to say here, IP NAT, and this is the inside, right? IP NAT inside. That is done. Now I'll go to the interface, fast Ethernet 1 over 0. I have to say IP NAT, and you are the outside. And that's it. That's all what I need to do from the router one. So if as a review, we have enabled the HTTP client here. This router has internet. We made the HTTP server on this interface. So this router can get the IP. We made the NAT. We said this is the inside NAT. This is the outside NAT. So all in all, everything is perfect. Now we have to check if router2 can go to the internet. Let's go to router2. So at this moment, router2, if you see, if I repeat the comment, so the interface gigabit 0 over 0, which is his interface, it's down. So first, let's bring it up. Configure terminal, and then interface gigabit 0 over 0. And then we say no, shut down. So it is up at this moment. And we, if we can repeat the comment to show IP interface brief, we can see it is up, but it doesn't have any IP. So that means if I say do ping to a.a.a.8, .a 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 .a, which is an IP on the internet, of course, it cannot go to the internet because it has no any information, no IP, no subnet match, no, no gateway. So let's enable the DHCP client on this interface so it can get all those information and see if then it can go to the internet. We repeat the comment IP address DHCP. That's all what I need to do. So it should get now an IP from the range of 192.168.12. something. Let's check. 
do show IP interface, here we go. It has received an IP of 192.168.12.2 from the DHCP that we have configured. That means our DHCP server is working perfectly. Can I go to the internet? Let's ping and see. So I can see that it cannot go to the internet. Hmm. So it looks like we have done a small mistake somewhere. Let's go to router one and check our configuration to see what was the mistake we have done. This is correct. And here we said IP not, oh, now I see what is the mistake, this one. So it should be IP not, and then we have to say inside source, this one. We forget to put the inside here. Okay, so le let me tell you what we have to do. We can just uh, take that comment. Okay, and now before we, we add it, let's go one level back. Now we put here the comment and then I have to say here no IP net source list and then now I can repeat the comment without saying no and here I have to say IP net inside that's what is missing you see a small mistake like this can make it work not working so let's have a look now again we go back let's do the here we go you see the router is now connected to the internet. So we have to say here, IPNet, my inside is source list one. So this is the list one, is my inside. And my outside is the interface fastest one over zero overload. So that was the mistake. Now, another thing that we can check for the show comments on router one, we can say show IP DHCP binding. And then we can see that it has given this IP to my uh, other router. You're very good. And for the NAT, we can say show IP NAT translation. IP NAT translation. So this is, you can see the ping, it's ICMP. It has been translated from this uh, router, uh, which has this IP to the uh, the outside, uh, actually the inside global it's called. So this is my outside interface to be able to go to the IP, which is in uh, the internet. And you can see it's ICMP. There is also another comment which you can use, which is IPNAT statistics. And that's also, it shows you some more statistics. Here you can see that this is the outside interface that we said, this is the inside interface. Um, here we can see some, uh, um, for example, uh, information like the access list uh, that we have created. Um, some hits that happens and some misses that happens. So all those information, you can see them. So that is all what I wanted to show you in this video. It's a very nice video. We uh, pass through the DHCP or as the DHCP client and DHCP server on Cisco iOS and the NAT. And then we have tested and we show that uh, everything is working as it should be with a small mistake that I did on the IP uh, NAT uh, configuration that I forgot to put the inside. Once we added the, the keyword inside, this worked well. So that is all what I wanted to show you in this video. Please, if you like my way of teaching, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, put like and share this video to other people to know about my work. Thank you and have a nice day. Bye-bye.